Hello everyone, welcome. I am back after a while with a great tutorial. In this tutorial I will show you how to model, UV unwrap, texture and render this adapter. Also at the beginning I will show you my image plane creating process which is really important when it comes to product modeling and rendering. You cannot always find everything you want on online so I hope that it will help you. So further ado, let's get into it. Before getting into modeling, let me show you how I prepared this image plane. So basically, I took these pictures with my phone. This is the front one. The front one should be right in the center of the image. You can use these quad lines. They help a lot. For example, I set this one right in the middle and I aligned this image as much as possible. Then the top one. This one should be right above the front one. And the last one is the side one. You can put this one on the right side or the left side. So that's it. Also, the other thing, when you take pictures with your iPhone, since they have wide angles, you are going to get perspective distortion. For example, this is what I took. And you can see the distortion. But you can fix that with, you know, scale tools. Or the perspective one. You can try to fix that as much as possible. Of course, it's not going to be perfect, but it's better than nothing. If you have a DSLR and a narrow lens, your job should be much easier. So that you are not going to get these perspective distortions. So that's all for the image plane. Just save that as JPEG. It doesn't matter. The quality is not important. Now, let's switch to Cinema 4D. To import this image plane in, I will hit Shift and V. Uh, sorry, I should first go to the front view, use middle mouse, Shift and V back, select this one, bring this up, transparency, then I'm gonna double click on here, copy the pad, Control C, let's go to the top view and paste that over. And for the right view as well, Control V. Now let's add a cube, go to the front view. As you can see, since I put the front image right in the middle, I don't need to change anything in the Cinema 4D. Of course, we need to make some changes on the top and side view. So let's put this one over here. Now let's go to the top view. I will hit Shift and V and change the Y offset. We can use this model as a reference to change the y-axis, like this is looking okay. Now I will go to the light view, this time I will change the x offset. One more time, we can scale this box and it looks like we are good to go. As you can see, if you prepare your image planes like that, it's gonna make your job much faster and easier in Cinema 4D. Now let's get into modeling. I will use that box and I'm gonna start from the bottom part. Whenever I approach these kind of shapes, I like to start from the complex parts to simpler parts because it is always easier to model the simpler parts. So let's start from over here. I will go to the right view and scale this like that let's turn off work plane go to the cube and i will give some segments make the cube editable and select that polygon also i will enable symmetry and i'm gonna duck it over here because i will change some stuff at the time so now let's grab that polygon duck it over here Enable this one. I will hold down control and move this out. Uh, sorry, I should have enabled Z as well. Hold down control and move this one over here. Then I will go with the edge mode, select this one. I will right click on one of the axes and select world. Let's move this one somewhere around here. You can bleed. Top polygons. Then let's see. 
I should bring this down. Then I will select that edge. Hold down control and extrude this two times. Then I am gonna grab that edge. Hold down control. One more time, extrude this two times. Perfect. Now I will deselect everything because I will use bridge tool and connect these edges. Perfect. Now I will make these edges perfectly straight. Select them all, scale them on the y axis to 0%. Since we have perspective distortion. These will not align perfectly, but it should be okay. Now let's double click on this and hold down control, move this up. Let's go to the top view. It looks like these points should be perfectly straight. So I will scale them on the Z, hold down shift and stop at zero persons. Perfect. Let's close that hole. Right click, close polygon, polygon hole tool, and select grid, grid option. That's all. As you can see, the edges should be beveled. So I will select on this one because the symmetry is on. Right click, select bevel tool, and bevel this out with zero subdivision. It's gonna be enough. Then I'm gonna grab slide tool. Because we need to get rid of that triangle, hold down control and merge this one to this one. Also, I want to slide this edge because I want these polygons to have the same size. So I will move this on the X just a bit. Doesn't have to be perfect. Something like that should be now. And I believe this is going to be it for the overall shape. Now let's put this one into a subdivision surface. Hold down Alt, select subdivision surface. Now I will grab loop cut tool. Where was that? Yes, here. This one, the most obvious one. And this one, but we are gonna need something different. If you want to select these edges. And I will select bevel tool. This time I will need more than zero. So let's set this to one and bevel these out. Something like that. To get rid of this geo, I'm gonna change my melting to uniform. Perfect, let's set Q. Uh, it is looking great. You may get this getting error, but it is easy to fix. Just go to the phone tag and turn off edge breaks. Then, watch over here. I will add these loop cuts. And you're gonna see that all these changes to overall shape. You're gonna need this, especially on curved surfaces. Then, I'm gonna add some loop cuts because we want a uniform geo mesh. Same here, I will hold down shift. Get these ones in. Same here. Hold on shift then increase the number of the cuts. Try to have these polygons as square as possible. Then we are gonna need something like that on the sides. So I will grab line cut tool. Let's enable single line and let's see. I believe we can make something like that. Never mind the other sides because symmetry is handling that for us. Then we are gonna get these triangles. Let's find a way to get rid of them. I can get these edges. And that's gonna be, oh, of course we need to dissolve this edge. We have an angle over here, but since it's not gonna change the shape, 
we can keep it as a subdivision surface in enhance mode we'll convert them to quads as you can see there is some tightness over here let's see what's going on yes we have duplicated edges so first let me select all the points and use optimize tool yes it fixed that so optimize tool basically merge the points when they are too close to each other i'm going to check the geometry and everything is looking pretty good now the bottom parts let's see i need to select these ones but i believe i should turn off symmetry i will show you another way to mirror the geometry but first let me model this part i believe i need to select these polygons then i will make an inset then use fit circle tool I need to change the angle, then scale this in. Let's see. Mm, it's supposed to be over here. And I believe it is supposed to be smaller than that. Yeah, something like that should be enough. Also, I want to follow the right view. Hold down control. As you can see, I need to scale this in just a bit more. Hold down control. Bring this down one more time. And uh, last time. I will move that point down. Then select these unconnected points. Then bring this up. And let's look cuts. Let's hit Q. And this is exactly what we want. Now I want to select these polygons and select scale tool, hold down control and scale this in. I will grab loop cut tool and it is supporting edges. This part is looking weird, so I will hold down control and slide down. Or you can use loop cut tool, it's going to be much easier. Perfect. Now I will show you how you can mirror these polygons on the other side. Right click, select Smith Rise. When you open that up, it's going to come with link with hub option is enabled so if you keep that enabled it's gonna use the settings you are using in the symmetric hub but in that case i want something different so i will turn this off so i modeled this on the plus side of the x so i should select plus to minus it's okay and that's gonna be it now the sides Let's go to the right view. To make this part, I will use another cube. And I'm gonna pull this out. So let's make this one editable and move the points. Then let's move it over here. Going to edge mode, I will make a ring selection to select these edges. And I will bevel this. Like that, then select the cube, hold down Alt and select Pool, put this one under that. And that's gonna be it. Before making the bull editable, I will enable uh, create single object and make it editable. Now let's go into points mode. We need to clean up the mesh to do that. Come over here, go to mesh checking, enable that, go to edge points and select these points and simply delete them. We can turn off mesh checking. Now all I need to do connect the points. But before doing that, because I will have bevel on these edges first, I will melt these polygons. You can find it over here, but right over here. Now I will make a loop selection, grab bevel tool, set subdivision to the zero and bevel these like that 
and I believe before doing that I need to select these polygons and so I don't need that polygon select this back and I'm gonna scale this in but as you can see we need to lock the X click on here scale this in right now I will bevel this one more time yes now it's much better let's make it oh sorry four centimeters now I can connect the points this one is easy this one is easy I can connect this like that then I'm gonna select loop cut tool I will add this then go back to polygon pen tool perfect now let's add sporting edges before adding these I will hit Q this way I will see the topology and it looks like we need to make these empty points this one over here these ones here sit Q check the five frames it looks like we missed that one perfect now let's grab back loop cut tool and add this one in perfect we need to scale this to zero and move these up because we want uniformity especially on these curved surfaces which means that I need to move these up so that these polygons will have the same sizes same here this is really important on curved shapes you should always wash that out now as you can see we broke the uniformity of the polygons to fix that I will just double click on them then I will use rectangle selection tool hold down control and select these ones we don't want to change these edges we just set them up now I will right click and select equal spacing tool perfect perfect surface of course you may find some edges too sharp to fix that we need to select them off but for the moment I will keep them like that because we need to add more details to the shape for example let's go to the front view and you can see that we have a cutout on the top part so to do that I will use font break selection in polygon mode and click on that polygon then I will make an set let's see I believe you are gonna need something like that then I will do the same thing but watch that out it's gonna be really small subtle extrusion then select this with loop selection tool hold down control and move these polygons that's gonna be all Another thing, the top part of the shape, I don't know if it's coming through the video, but there's this part which is slightly larger. So I'm gonna make a loop selection and scale this out. Uh, I believe, I, yes, I unlocked X, so I will unlock that and scale this out. Perfect. I can select these and move them up. All right, that should be okay. Let's try to make these edges softer. 
I mean, right now they are too sharp. So I will make a loop selection to select these edges. Grab slide tool, slide these off like that. Then we may need something similar on these edges as well. So I will select them like that. Let's hit Q. No, it is looking much softer. Now I will move these edges on the X. Let's enable symmetry. Okay, I will turn this off. Then I'm gonna double click on these edges. We're gonna need to slide these in. We will need something like that, which we did on the top part. And so I believe I moved these points. I will fix that in a moment. Let's, let's handle this part. So I will grab slide tool, alt and control, slide these in. Then I will do that one more time so that I can select these polygons and I can extrude them like that. Spotting edge on these polygons, so I will slide these in. It looks like I need to select these polygons and make them flat. So use font break selection, hit T and scale them to zero on the Y axis. That should fix that part. But so I am not sure about here. Let's make it more obvious. I will scale this in just a bit. And I will select these polygons with loop selection and smooth this down. And finally, I will make form rack selection to select these polygons only and make an inset. Which means that we need something similar over here. Perfect. And also let's fix here. I will use polygon pen tool. I don't know what happened over here, but these things happen all the time. Okay, let's hit Q and check the live frames. Everything is looking nice and clear. Now let's try to model the inside of that. USB. First, I will add a loop cut right over here so that I can select these polygons. I'm going to split these out. We can right click and select. Where is that? Yes, this one. I will go back to the original one and delete these polygons. While we are here, let's rename that to charger and USB. I will solo this one. I'm going to turn off uh, close the symmetry half. I don't want to use the new symmetry system because sometimes it may get too complicated with it. So I will try to make it as simple as possible, which means that I will use the old symmetry generator. We still have that one. To use it, of course, we need to add center edges. Leave this one, for example, over here, Alt and Shift, and add these ones in. We have our X edge over here. We don't need to add anything more. Then I will go into model mode. As you can see, the axis of the object is way off. We need to fix that. Go to tools, axis, center axis tool. This should reset the axis of the object, but we still have a problem. As you can see, it is right, it's not right on the edge and it is going to create a problem. To fix that, I will enable the axis mode so that we can move the axis, but we are going to need one more thing and it is the edge snap. Enable that and in the options, enable the edge mode and move that up. It's going to automatically snap on the edge. Now let's check, check the top view. As you can see, 
these edges are not perfectly straight. So let's go to the coordinates. First, let me turn off snap and access mod. Select these two edges and check the Z. First, I'm going to scale them to zero, then position them to zero. Now I can select these polygons, invert them and delete them. Now I will hold down Alt and select Symmetry, change the mirror plane. I will do that one more time. Symmetry and select X and Z. Now we are good to go. I will mostly use the white view. Let's grab line cut tool and it looks like I need to add this one over here, maybe somewhere around here. Then I will add a new loop cut here and here. Then another one. Then I'm going to scale this like that. Then while these are selected, I will make any set. Then go back to points mode and merge these points with polygon pen tool. Because I want to delete these polygons. Then I can move these over here. Let's see. It's supposed to be somewhere around here, I believe. By the way, I am not expert about this technical, you know, stuff, but I'm just trying to model what I saw because I am holding the objects right in my hand and it looks like we have something like that. Then, I believe we can make the symmetry editable because we need to close that hole. Right click, close polygon hole tool and it doesn't look that good which means that I need to reach this then add supporting edges like three then use the close polygon hole tool one more time now it gives a better result sometimes you need to kind of help the tool by adding geometry then let's see we are going to have holes to do them I can add this edge over here. Then let me see. I can add this one and this one. I will move this up to make enough space. Same here. That should be enough. Now I'm gonna select all of them and make an inset. Then go into edge mode, double click on the edges and, you know, just try to match them as much as possible. Okay, there should be enough. Maybe I can scale this to zero and move them out. These parts will not be visible, so I'm not worried about this. Just delete them. Then let's put an enable subdivision surface. But when I enable it, I will start to see the charger. So I will just hide it for the moment. And since this is, these are not in a single group, I'm gonna group them so that subdivision surface will subdivide both of these. No, obviously we are not gonna need supporting edges. These ones, easy stuff. But when we reach over here, I cannot add that loop cut because it's gonna break the rounder parts. Let's say that we add this one. If we enable the the surface, these parts will be, you know, sharper. You're not gonna probably see it when you render it, but just in case, I want to show you the most efficient way. So, let's add these supporting edges. I know these are triangles, but 
we have no option. I will do the same thing if you enable the side of your surface. It's gonna look okay since the surface is flat, these triangles will not affect anything. I will quickly do the same thing on these holes as well. Now I want to eat these edges. I think this is going to be enough for this piece since it's not going to be much visible. I will select them all. Control A, select extrude tool and enable create caps option and extrude these out. Then Enable subdivision surface. I will eat these once. Let's unhide the charger. All right, not bad. Because of the symmetry, there is a slight offset, so I'm gonna move these down just a bit. Perfect. Also, I want to extrude these edges out. Perfect. Then we have, let me hide this. We have this thing over here. I have no idea what is that, but you know, the USBs. So I will let a cube in. Uh, let me hide this one for the moment. Make it editable. Try to match it. Then I will make an inset and move it on the X. Let's unhide all objects, I will hit NNG to select these unseen points and move them on the X, then I will hide this one more time. Hmm, okay. I will add another cube and I'm gonna scale this like that, make it editable. Should be somewhere around here. Then another one. I don't know, something like that. Maybe slightly larger. Then duplicate this. Hold that control and drag the object off. Then I can connect this, connect objects and delete. I will go back to this one because we need to make space for this. Oh, these polygons. This one, then maybe another one over here. Select the polygons and extrude them. Turn off the absorption. And that's gonna be it. Maybe I can move them like that. Now, let's quickly add supporting edges. I'm gonna put them in that South Division surface group. I will hide the other ones for the moment. Let's quickly handle the cubes. Actually, you know what? I can use line cap tool. I will just turn off visible only. Then I will hold on shift and it is edges same here this is another way to add supporting edges same here and horizontal ones hmm. 
Nice. Then another one. Let's quickly do that. This one, this one, and this one. These ones. Then. Edges. This might be too excessive, you know, lots of polygons for for a, such an unimported piece, which will not be much visible. But you know, I want to show you exactly what I do in such objects. If you have time, obviously you can make it lighter, like you can get rid of unnecessary edges like that. Then double click on these edges, dissolve them, same here. But before doing that, we need to do the same thing on that side as well. So let me quickly do that. Then double click. So same here, double click. These edges, then so now the topology is much lighter, and I believe this is going to be it. Let's unhide these ones, maybe it's other surface. All right, looking pretty good sometimes. I enable screen space and reticulation. It helps to see the objects better. I just want to move these like that just a bit. Then the last thing I want to add, actually before doing that, let me make a funk break selection selection. It's UNN, or you can get it from here. Select this polygon islands, and I'm gonna scale this to zero. Perfect. And the last thing I want to add is that seam. Let me go to the front view. Yes, you can see that we have a seam right in the middle. We are trying to make this one as realistic as possible, so I will try to add this as well. So double click on these edges. It's gonna select them all, but we don't want that. I'm not gonna need these edges. So to select them with live selection tool over here. New name is price selection. Just to select them. Then um, I don't think. We're gonna need these ones. All right, now I will grab bevel tool with on subdivision. This is gonna to be too much, so I will bring these down to one centimeters. Then I will double click on these middle edges. Perfect. Then I'm gonna scale this on the X just a bit, not too much. And we don't need to select this. Just a bit. These are still selected. Let's select them and scale them one more time. Just a little bit, not too much. We want something subtle. 
just like this one. These are gonna look really good when you render the object. It's kind of imperfections make it look like really real. Since we have so many polygons in a, such a small area, these parts are looking more, you know, dense than the other parts. So we need to make this part slightly softer. So I'm gonna move this in. Let's see if it's gonna help. Yeah, not bad. Same here. Perfect. Then, this is the last thing, I promise. I will make an inset, use the circle tool. So we have something like that right in the middle. Perfect. We are done with the modeling. Before closing this, um, let me select these ones and use a cool spacing tool. Now it is time to unwrap the UVs of the objects. Before doing that, Let's check the normals of the polygons. This one, I will hit Ctrl A on the keyboard and it looks like they are flipped. I will right click and go to the bottom and say reverse normals. Then the charger, Ctrl A, this one is looking okay. Then this one, you know what? I can. Combine this, connect objects and delete. Let's say that inside USB, or actually, let me just combine these two. Control A, everything is looking great. Then the charger, this one is also okay. Now we can change our layout to UV edit. Let's start with the charger. As you can see, the UVs are messed right now. I'm gonna reset them, reset UV. Then I will go into edge mode, deselect everything, and start to select the sharp edges. For example, this one. You can do that by double clicking on them, or you can use loop selection right over here, or you can use the shortcut UNL. Then I will select this and this. As you can see, I am selecting the sharp edges only. This one and this one. Then these edges, this, 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 and this. Then this one, this one, and this one. This part is really easy. Just select the sharp edges. It is most of the time, very obvious. This one and this one. Then this, this. I could select these as well. All right, I believe I selected them all. Now, the next step is selecting the seams. For example, we need to select a seam on these polygons. If you are able to make a loop selection, it means that you need to select an edge as a seam because these polygons need an exit point, if that makes sense. Same here. We can make a loop selection, which means that I need a seam. Actually, this is going to make 
more sense if I show you on a cylindrical object or polygons. For example, I can make a perfect loop selection, but this polygons needs an exit point or an edge to be unwrapped into the view. So for these reasons, we select seams. I also try to select these seams as far as possible from the camera. For example, I selected these ones and probably maybe we could select these edges instead so that we are not going to see it when we render the object. And these edges, these ones, then this, same here. I'm not going to select anything on these polygons. I know we can make a loop selection, but projection mapping will handle these polygons. You can say it by the angles of the edges. Then you are going to need something on these polygons. Then probably something like that. I could make a loop selection, but because of the projection and angles of these polygons, they don't need any seams, but it is different for these polygons. I will need a seam, so I'm going to select this. Then let's see. I'm going to select these as well. Select the first one, hold down shift, select this one, then hold down control and shift at the same time and select the last one. And we will need prob probably something like that over here, same here. I am holding Ctrl and Shift to make these selections. I believe this is going to be it. Of course, to make sure, we need to unwrap this. While these are selected, just click on UV Unwrap. They are very small right now, so I will go into Polygon Mode, select them all, Ctrl A, go to UV Packing, select Geometric one, and I can enable Equalize Island Size, and hit Apply. As you can see, we have nearly no problems at all. Maybe these ones need some alignments. To do that, I will just select a straight edge and click on Align UV Islands. I don't know why, but these seams are flickering. I don't know why. Maybe it's because of my Cinema 4D or my PC. So I'm going to turn off that UV seams here. Everything is looking great. To make sure, of course, I will apply a material to our object to see the alignments of the UVs. Before doing that, let me unwrap the USB. It's going to be really fast since I, I'm not going to texture these objects. I can use these projection types. And for this kind of hard surface shapes, box projection is great. Let me show you. Just click on box. And that's all. Maybe we can use UV packing. As you can see, very fast and very accurate result. Now let's apply a material. Just click on the material icon, double click, go to color. I'm going to select this UV tile. 
Turn off reflectance, go to viewport and bring these up to 1k so we can see it better in TV view. And all we need to do is apply this to the charger. Actually, you don't have to do that, this material stuff, because Cinema 4D has its own UV tile, UV map. You can select it from here, but you cannot scale the UV map or texture. Instead, you need to scale up the polygons. And I don't like to do that, so the easier way is applying a new material which has a UV tile on it. Is UV texture, whatever you call it. Then I can close this. And now I can scale this instead, like 25%. Now let's check these polygons. As you can see, I need to rotate it. I will rotate it, then hold down shift to snap it to 90 degrees. Then I'm gonna hit mirror V. And I can move that aside. Actually, I should also click on mirror view as well. Then this part is looking already okay. And this part, I'm gonna move it over here, then rotate it 90 degrees. So these three UV islands are gonna be the most important ones because I'm gonna put textures on them. So it's because why I am mostly focusing on these three islands. Then we have these ones. I will just rotate it 90 degrees. Then can see it from the texture that we need to hit mirror U and mirror V. This one is okay. This one I'm gonna hit mirror U and mirror V. And this one just double click on any UV island and it's gonna select it automatically. Then this one, what is that? This one may need some relaxation. So let's go to relax UV and hit apply. I'm gonna rotate it 90 degrees, same here. This needs a little bit of relaxation. I need to clip this mirror U and mirror V. Okay, everything is looking perfect. Now I will uh, actually, you know what? I'm gonna select them all, move them aside, then move these in. As I told you, these are the most important ones because I'm gonna put textures on them so they deserve a larger space than the other ones. Of course, if you want to model game models or game props, the workflow will be different than that. But since we are going to stay in Cinema 4D, we can do that, like changing the sizes of the UEs. Then this one, I can move this one over here. Then I can select them all, go to UV Picking, Geometric, enable Preserve Orientation because, you know, we just rotated some of them to align the UVs. I will turn off Equalize Island Size because I made this larger than the other ones. If I keep that enabled, it's gonna try to rescale them all one more time based on their real sizes. Now let's hit apply. And that's gonna be it. Of course, we can spend more time and make it more efficient. Like, I don't know, 
selecting these, making them again larger and playing to all the real these pets. It's going to be more than enough for our projects. Then the other one, I don't think it's, I don't think we need to do anything on this one. Just to check it, I'm going to move the material on the USB one. And as we can see, it is looking really nice. No distortion at all. And I can click it, we are done with this material. And we are done with the UVs. Now I'm gonna start to paint the textures. Before moving forward, I will go back to UV edit because I just saw that these polygons are out of their place, as you can see, and this may create a problem. To fix it, let's go to the UV commands and hit UV terrace. This is gonna put them in place. Now we can switch to paint mode. I usually unlock this and the, this one over here so that we get two views, both 3D and 2D. Now, to paint any objects, you need to click on here to the setup wizard. I will select the objects that I want to paint and it's going to be the charger. Let's select all and select the charger. Say next. Unclick recalculate UV because we already did that. Say next. I will need both color and bump, so enable this as well. For the size, I will set this to 4K. It is kind of industry standard right at the moment. Say finish and close. Now we are ready to paint our models. Of course, we are not gonna paint them like that. I will use textures. So let me show you what I did in Photoshop. Here are my textures. This one and this one for the bump map. So this is why they are in white. Then this check texture will be for the color. That's all. Save that as PSD and we'll be able to open that up in Sam 4D. By the way, this texture is from an image. I played with this blending mode to extract this out. Otherwise, this is something like that. If you hold down Alt, you can play with the blending mode. And this is how I did this texture. So save that as PSD and let's go back to Cinema 4D. In Cinema 4D, I will first check my textures, matte one color for the color texture and the other one is for the bump map. Let's first get the color out of the way. It's gonna be really easy. First, I will open that texture I made in Photoshop. Open texture. As you can see, it comes with these layers, just like in Photoshop. As I told you, first I will handle the color. So, I will just enable this layer, select select rectangle and select this, then edit copy. Now I should go back to color texture of the material and paste that over. Control V. That's all. Now we need to find where this is supposed to be. Okay, I need to scale this. Scale, then hold down shift to keep the expect ratio of the texture. Okay, this is looking fine. Then I'm gonna click off. Then it's gonna ask me, do you want to transform the layer? Yes. Also for the background, I'm gonna make it pure white. First, let's check the colors. Yes, it is in white. So I can go over here and select fill layer. Perfect. Now let's check if we have any texture distortion. I will enable subdivision surface. And as you can see, we have no distortion at all. Now I will go back to textures folder. 
hide this one and let's select this one same process rectangle selection select this edit copy go to the pump map this time and paste that over this is supposed to be somewhere around here and the good part is that you can see that in the 3d view this is gonna be something smaller so i'm gonna scale this down alt and shift somewhere in the middle like that click off say yes go back to textures folder and the last one same thing rectangle selection Ctrl c bump map and paste that over this should be on the top somewhere around here i need to scale this down all time shift yeah we are done over here uh, actually let me paint this background layer to black because this is gonna be a bump map let's go to colors set this to black and fill layer let me check this one one more time yeah white okay we are done with the textures now all i need to do is save them click on save texture as we can keep it as tip file so that we can go back and change anything okay let's name it the color then bump map file save texture as and bump that's gonna be it we can switch back to standard so as soon as i switch to standard mode and select move tool you are going to see that the texture resolution has dropped down this is because we left the body paint but you can always go back to material and go to viewport and change the texture preview size to 1p for example we are done with the texturing now it is time to render this charger i switched to cinema 4d r26 because uh, 2023 version is keep crashing especially when i hit render button with redshift so because of these reasons i will continue with cinema 4d r26 and octane while we are talking about this let me change my render to octane renderer i'm gonna change my resolution to full hd and i can close that now let's scale this down to its normal size for a reference i will add a cube and change its y size to something like five centimeters then select them now uh, let me change that name to charger then i'm gonna scale this down until it fits inside of the cube doesn't have to be perfect something like that will be okay we can delete the cube we can zoom in by pressing s now let's add a camera look through that first thing first i always change my focal length to something like 90 or 85 let's use 90 and this is looking fine now the environment and hdri let's open up live river window first thing first let's make some changes for example i'm going to change my direct lighting to pet tracing and lower this down to 5 12 8 8 and gi clamp to 1000 so that we are gonna get much faster results in the live viewer window i can close that i can lock the view and that's that's gonna be it we can hit render let's add first an hdri environment 
click on image texture and click on this folder. I will use a CG HDRI. As you can see, it gives immediately a very nice result, but I don't want to see it in the background. For the background, I will create another HDRI environment, but I'm going to change its type to visible environments so that it's not going to affect the lighting. Now we can start to work on the materials. Click on over here. Actually, we can do it from here. Great. Obtain glossy material. This is going to be for the charger. Charger. Open that up. Open up mod editor. Let's search for texture. For the color in and link that to diffuse. And the other one is the bump map. I will just hold down control and drag this off and select the texture and link that to bump. That's gonna be it. Let's apply this to the charger. We can drag this on to the previous material. I have the object and I see that it has a very rough surface and I'm gonna get that bit a bump map. So let's look for bump, sorry not bump, noise, excuse me. I, I want the noise, bring that in and this is gonna go to the bump map. I'm gonna combine this later but first I want to get this out of the way the noise also I'm gonna solo it alt and D you will be there with a transform because I'm gonna scale this into like 0 0.1 or point zero one You may get these artifacts because this is using our UV double space. You can change it though. Like you can go to noise and enable select projection and change its projection to something like box. Now noise will be uniform. Scale. I need to scale this down like 0.1 or something like that. Now I need to combine these two. To do that, we are going to use add notes. Let's put this one texture to texture one, and these will go to the texture two, and this goes to the map map. I can turn off solo mode, Alt D. Let's make a render region. It's going to be much faster. As you can see, this is too sharp. To make this one less powerful, I will add and obtain gradients search for gradient obtain gradient and put this one on the connection all i need to do change this white color to darker one actually before doing that let me make a render region so you can see it better see as i move this down to the black values the surface will be glossy so I will use roughness channel of the material like 10 okay 10 is too much so like six maybe we need to invert it just click on the invert and that's gonna be it I want to check the top part as well so let's select the charger group for the curtains and around 
and this is looking okay i can reset this uh, so let's check the other sides okay not bad so now i'm gonna make another material for these metal parts materials great close material and make that to metal first thing first diffuse should be pure black then index something like six will be enough to make this one metal and for the roughness i'm gonna do something different let's open up the node editor i'm gonna control the roughness with an rgb spectrum basically a color value let's link that to roughness first of course we need to assign this material so move these aside select charger going to polygon mode i'm going to make a loop selection then i will grow the selection a few times u and y it is right over here grow selection a few times then right click on the metal material and say apply this is going to create a selection tag and apply the material on these polygons and you can see what we are getting of course this color will be too much for the roughness so i'm gonna make this one something like black but not pure i want some roughness then i'm gonna import another texture look for texture image texture this time i will bring in something like you know these grunge textures so let's select um, let's try this one for example and to link that to roughness i'm gonna make this one larger so you can see what's going on mm, i don't know maybe we can scale this down you will transform 0.1 yeah this is looking much better now i'm gonna combine this same process add not this goes to the first texture slot then this goes to the second and link add to the roughness now i can change the overall roughness with that color value like we can make it that or like that or something that of course you can make this one more complicated by adding more textures crunch textures but for the moment this is going to be enough for me i can close this set this back to one Now I want to play with the camera settings. I will add first an Octane camera tag and camera imager. Enable camera imager. First thing first, I always increase that highlight compression up so that we are not gonna lose anything in the highlights, especially on white objects. While talking about materials, I want to play with this color because it is too white and this kind of white color is is not something that you want so we need to kind of break this down and lower the power of that white color to do that i will select octane gradient and put on the connection i will basically move change change the white color to something darker to see it better i will make render region and let's make it like 90 percent you can see the effect we are getting this should be enough the right side of the object is looking really nice we have a nice highlight over here a good contrast with this black shadow but on the left side it is a little bit dull 
So we need to add a light to that site. To do that, objects, lights, obtain area light. Let's go to the top view, model mods, rotate it 90 degrees. This light is probably too large, so I'm gonna scale this down. And so, to make this part more pleasing, I'm gonna move these lights up so that it's gonna create a shadow around here. So it's gonna give us more definition of the shape. So I'm gonna basically move this up and we are gonna start to get slight shadow on this area. Since we scale this down, the intensity is not that powerful. So let's make this one something like 150. No, it's too much. And I think we put this one on the wrong side. It should be somewhere around here. Yeah. I think this is a good looking product shot. Let's rotate this. Now um, let's make something for the USB part. Uh, I'm gonna stop the render for the moment and get a closer look. USB going to polygon mod. I can double click on these polygons. I will just apply this metal material on these, then double click on these polygons. It's gonna select them all. And this time I'm gonna just apply this white material. Let's go back to the camera and re-enable render. All right, pretty nice. You may find the black background boring and you are right. For such shots, like product shots, the background is usually in kind of, you know, white, whitish color. So let's select the background. Also, let me rename that to background. This is HDRI. I'm gonna change background color to something like whitish color, but not exactly white, like that. In that case, we may need to make some changes on the lighting, like rotating this, something like that, will be more natural so that it's the charger will be in a whitish environment but it is all about what you are working on so i'm gonna set this back to the original one and change my background to black not exactly black but something closer to black then let's go to post processing enable this one i always like to add some bloom this kind of breaks the rawness of the renders kind of some layer power let's pick this and get a different look If your highlights are too sharp, you can always go back to the camera and play with the highlights compression. Check this part out as I increase the highlight compression up. See this. Now let's check the logo. Yeah, this highlight is too much. 
you know, this is looking really nice. Metals look really good. I'm gonna rotate this just to see the logo. Perfect. All right, everyone, that's gonna be it. I am really happy with the result. I hope you learned something new and enjoyed the tutorial. If you have any questions, you can ask them in the comments. I read them all. So, I will see you later. Bye.